Well, welcome back, guys, to the Battle of Bibracte. So we're continuing here, and we're going to go ahead and turn it over to the Gaul. Sorry, we had to cut the video there for a second. Had a little system failure. Uh, nothing serious, but um, uh, basically had to reopen the screen because it just crashed to the bottom. Um, we're going to go ahead, end the turn, turn it over to the Gauls. Hope for the best, guys. I really, really want to win this one, but I don't know if we can. The boy and Tulinji have arrived behind their flank. Oh, this is bad, guys. The enemy... Or, wait a minute. Hopefully there are allies. We'll have to see. I don't think the Tulinji are allies. I think they're helping the Gauls. We're gonna have to see, guys. We have to win this battle a lot faster. As you can see, our men are already getting fragmented there. That's not good. I think we can beat these men back. 117 fragmented. Still not dead, but we're getting closer. Come on, boys. 108 held firm. The amazing thing is just how damn strong these Gauls are. They just refuse to surrender here. Uh, one of their units just re-rallied. Now we're at 20% on all sides. Our general is becoming fragmented. It's just becoming extremely tedious and extremely hard to hold these Gauls off, guys. There we go, I think. Nope, that's definitely not the end of the enemy turn. Warband is coming in. And there we go. This looks like some enemy warriors come to finish us off. Oh no. Rear attack. And we were trying to purposely turn this way to attack this unit. I hope we can still get a good charge in. Uh, but it's all going to depend on luck, I think, at this point, guys. <coughs> there we go. That's a break. Fragmented another unit. If we can charge into them, we could do serious damage. Another enemy break, guys. This unit held firm, but we're definitely starting to break the enemy line here. Two, three breaks. That's beautiful. We've got the Gauls at 30%. If we don't break them soon, their allies are going to absolutely smash into our rear and kill us all. Right here, our men have held firm. I'm amazed they have because there's not many men left in that unit. Um, this is an enemy general unit, and if we could kill the general, that would be incredible. And there we go, guys. Yet another break. We've got to turn that cavalry around, though. They're not doing us any favors by chasing the enemy down when the enemy's already beaten. There we go. Another break, and there's actually some legionaries in their path. We could go ahead and smash into that unit just for fun, but unfortunately... That's probably not going to do much. Also, one of our generals broke. It looks like uh, Titus Levianus survived so far, but he did break. And that's just uh, pretty much just as bad um, as running away. So here we go. We've got a lot of different options as to what we can do. Well, sort of. Uh, oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. Well, since we've already done it, we're going to go ahead and fire. And now we want to go ahead and start doing some damage here to these guys. We can't get there right now, but I really want to go after this warband, the Close Order Warband. So I'm going to move forward. I'm going to turn towards them. Hopefully, we'll be facing them next turn. Now, with this unit, I want to smash into the enemy lines and get a win. A melee win. We're charging. Throw the pilum. Now, most Roman legionaries would carry two pilum into battle. Um, that's not always the case, and there are some disagreements as to how that was done. Uh, right now, we're going to go ahead, turn and shoot. Some people believe it was one pilum. Some people believe it was three. I think three is pretty ridiculous. Uh, we're going to charge here, guys. Once again, our checkerboard pattern working out for us. Pilum. Wow. Okay, that's not good. So the enemy actually got a really good attack there. Um, I'm actually surprised. I'm going to move the slingers over here. Turn and throw at the barbarians. 62. It's a lot of damage, and I think we can rush in here with these men. But once again, the impact is not going to be that good. And actually, we stand higher chance of losing uh, in this battle than anything else. So we're not going to attack. What I will do is move this unit forward so that they can prepare to possibly attack one of these other units. Overall, though, we do need to be prepared for all of the enemy units around us. Uh, and we've got to get ready to charge and attack whatever we can. As you can see, we could smash this unit, get a flank charge. I think that might be a cool idea, but I'm not sure it's going to be the most tactically sound idea. Um, then again, it would get us behind the enemy, so flank charge it is. Look at that, guys. 40, and that is Julius Caesar over here, of course, commanding the Romans. Uh, I will turn. Remember, we can definitely face down the enemy cavalry and do a pretty good job at it, too. But we still have to beat the rest of the enemy army, and that's where we're going to have some difficulty. Uh, I do want to bring these... Uh, particular legionaries uh, to bear against the enemy, but we've got to get them into position first, and that might take a while. 
bring these guys in. Once again, we're going to have to turn them. We're going to have to attack that way. And already you can see the field is riddled with bodies, both of legionaries, noble warbands, and all sorts of other stuff. I guess we'll turn and shoot. I think it's the best thing to do right now. Try to kill as many of these barbarians as possible. But look at the reinforcements arriving over here, guys. This is not what I was looking for. Uh, but it does look like these uh, neighboring tribes, they're not as big as the Gaulish Confederation. So they don't seem to have um, as many men. Let's go ahead and attack. They only seem to have two companies each. And if that's the case, I think we have a chance, a chance of still winning here. Of course, I want you guys to let me know down below whether or not you think we can still win this battle, guys. There we go, disrupted with archers. You guys didn't think it was possible, but we just did it. If we could break the enemy archers, that would be incredible. Let's go ahead and attack with Lucius Aemilius. The enemy's held firm. Let's attack with our Germanic cavalry. No, let's not. Uh, but... Well, we're still fighting these guys. We do want to turn this cavalry around eventually. We're not going to be able to do it this turn, but perhaps we can do it next turn. Let's see. Oh, here we go, my friends. That is a major disruption. Uh, I'm going to take this unit. Unfortunately, we can't put him over here, but I can't really tell who's winning the battle. I want you guys to tell me who you think is winning the battle in the comments down below, and let us know who you think is going to be the ultimate victor in this fight. Um, of course, guys, as always, hit that like button, comment, subscribe if you're new, and I mean that seriously. We want to get this channel big. If you guys like these kind of games, you guys know that it's very hard to find people who do these kind of games, who play these games on a consistent basis. Here on the Agrippa Maxenius channel, we are always playing strategy games, and we play the strategy games that you guys want to see. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Take care, and have an amazing day. Well, hello there, guys. Welcome back to some more Field of Glory 2 action. We are, of course, here continuing the Battle of Bibracht. That was a mistake. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, but we are going to, of course, see if we can't get a victory here. Um, we're continuing with the Romans, guys. Uh, of course, we are playing as Julius Caesar um, in this battle, um, fighting the Gauls and trying to establish Roman supremacy in the region. These Gauls still think that they can live by themselves in their tiny hovels and stand away from the might of Rome, but we know that that's just not the case. Let's go ahead and take Titus Labienus. This is one of our generals, and we're going to have him smash in to the Gaulish warband here. You might think this is a bad idea. They do have spears, a few of them, but I am confident that we are going to win this um, and that we're going to be able to actually defeat those spears uh, no matter what happens. Um, another thing I want to do, I want to bring my slingers forward and throw something at these this superior warband. The problem is we've got some Roman legionaries here, and I kind of want these guys to deal with the enemy. That being said, these Roman legionaries are actually disrupted, so I'm going to move up. And I'm going to go ahead and throw those javelins. Now, remember, we're carrying javelins, not pilum. That's what our legionaries are carrying, although pilum are just as nasty, just as deadly. Um, I'm also going to go ahead, send this unit through, and throw more, more javelins here. My issue is that I know these units are not strong enough uh, to hold up against the enemy, and what I'm hoping is that they'll be able to run through here and escape, but they might not be able to, and if not, I've definitely made a mistake. But hey, you, you play a game to learn, right? Remember when I told you guys that these legionaries would stand up to the noble cavalry? You're about to see that happen. The noble cavalry is going to, of course, run away. The legionaries are actually pretty good at fighting enemy cavalry. Uh, they've been trained in this uh, art, and uh, they're pretty damn good at their profession. Now over here, our chances of a win are pretty small, but I'm going to move up and turn and throw some javelins at the enemy. I want to see if I can win this battle here. I might be able to. 46, the enemy held firm. And as you can see, 15% of our forces have retreated, and 22% of the Gallic forces have retreated. I think I'm going to bring in uh, Titus Aemilius, and hopefully next turn he can help get rid of Voteperix. This is one of the leaders of the Gauls, uh, one of the most vicious leaders. And you guys have to keep in mind that the Gauls um, are a confederation of tribes. So guys like Voteperix... Um, are essentially one of many tribal leaders, but they're, he's not the one in charge. Um, we're going to go ahead. Let's get some javelins out. We've got Divico with a superior warband, and Divico might be the guy in charge here. I'm also going to go ahead and charge this warband, close order warband. Throw those pillum and charge in 111 damage. Not bad at all, guys. And we've actually got Julius Caesar fighting the enemy here. We definitely don't want him to go down, so Julius is going to go ahead and resolve his combat here. 
but still 49 uh, down on each side. So we've got to be careful. And of course, if we lose Julius Caesar, well, we might as well have just lost the entire battle, even if we end up winning. Um, and I think you guys can understand that. Looks like these skirmishers are definitely in trouble. These light javelin horse, uh, we're going to have to hope that they don't, you know, lose the battle for us. But we're going to end the battle here and, uh, well, not end the battle, end our turn and turn it over to the Gauls. Let's hope for the best, guys. Don't forget also in the comments down below, um, if you enjoy Field of Glory 2 and you want to see some more, then please make sure to let us know. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and make sure to check out part one. That's going to be, of course, the first look video that I did, or the gameplay video that I did for Field of Glory. We also have part two up, and I'm going to go ahead and put a link for both down below in the comments. As you can see, our legionaries are fighting hard. A lot of enemies just went down right there. Um, 139 as a matter of fact, but the enemy's gonna go for a charge. And remember, this is one of our generals, guys. We can't afford to lose Titus Labienus or any of these guys. Um, and of course, Julius Caesar is gonna continue his fight. 46-46, it's very, very bloody. And it looks like the enemy's right flank, our left flank, they're doing a great job at slowly closing the gap. If they can turn us guys on that flank, they might be able to smash into all of our legionaries and end the battle prematurely. I'm hoping that that's not going to happen. One sixty four enemy disrupted. Not bad, guys. We're holding out for sure. Um, and if you see the tiny little yellow on top, there we go, a break. That tiny little yellow on top essentially lets us know that the enemy's disrupted. The same if there's a little red stripe on top. Um, and the enemy is definitely getting very disrupted during this battle. Uh, so if we can get that past 45%, uh, it's going to be great. And if we can get that past 60%, the enemy automatically loses. But as you can see, look at that. Those warbands are still managing to make some of our legionaries route, guys, despite the fact that initially, <coughs> excuse me, we were totally crushing these guys. Um, so let's hope that this is not the end. 20%, 26% of the Gauls have run. And of course, still a lot of battle to fight. Uh, I'm going to take a look now. A lot of these units, since they were just in combat, are not going to be able to use any sort of attacks. Uh, we can't attack these guys, unfortunately. I'd love to charge in, but we do have this unit here, and I do believe we can do a flank charge on the Close Order Warband. Let's go, boys. Belong! Fragmented. That's going to hurt them for sure. Um, and let's see over here. Now we've got Julius Caesar in the fight. I'm going to see if we can use these legionaries to get rid of this warband harassing them. 52. Unfortunately, Julius has already been in a, uh, a conflict this turn. And I really want to charge that cavalry, but I know that's going to be a mistake because they're just going to run. So I'm going to turn my legionaries this way, and I hope they know what they're doing. Um, let's go ahead. We might be able to charge in here. Let's do it. Legionaries, protect Julius Caesar. Remember, at this point, Julius Caesar is just a general. He's not the emperor yet. Uh, well, he never was the emperor, but uh, he's not the consul yet. Um, and, of course, this these are his conquests before um, all that business with Pompeii, etc. Uh, we're going to go ahead and attack here. Actually, I'm not sure that's going to work out. Nope, you know what? This is actually not bad. Let's go for it, guys. We started this fight. We're going to end it. Man, those warbands are strong. And they're not even, this unit right here, the Superior Warband, they're not even shaken yet. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of worried about what's going to happen. Let's charge. 27. Enemy broke. There we go. Might just be a few um, melee units, but you know what? It's not bad, and we actually got a rear attack on the archers here. Uh, if we can finish them off entirely, that's going to be great. So first things first, I want to see how much damage we do if we charge this unit. And actually, we wouldn't do much with a flank charge. I mean, this light javelin horse unit, it's not the strongest. It's just the truth. Uh, they're, they're really not that good. So we're going to charge these guys, see if we can't break them. 24, held firm. Man, got to give it to these Gauls. Of course, Lucius Aemilius is going to charge. And even with this charge, the impact against the enemy general, uh, Voteperix, uh, is going to be a rough one. It's going to be very even. Let's hope for the best. 12, 15. Well, we could certainly do better than that. Of course, we're not going to resolve combat there. And we're just looking around to see if there's anything else we can do this turn against the enemy. Here we go. Fight like men. Beautiful. We've also got this unit here. But I think we're going to have to f hopefully rely, well, 
not hopefully, but I think we're going to have to rely on our archers, etc., uh, our light units to really try and soak up as much of the enemy's damage and deal as much damage out at them as possible. We actually took out a number of those superior warband guys, but that's not going to be enough to win, as you guys can probably imagine. Over here, we're definitely having some trouble, and Titus Labienus is not in a good place. Let's go ahead and throw our javelin at the Gallic Light Javelinman, or I should say fire our bows at the Gallic Light Javelinman, and hope that we can turn this battle around some other way. Unfortunately, our uh, melee, or I should say our militia slingers can't charge, um, so we need to get closer to a unit that we can actually inflict damage on, and that might take a while. 